Hey everybody, and Taco Tuesday. Welcome to my kitchen with Get Cooking with Robin. And so normally, um, well, we love tacos and we also love um, our Mexican meal kit, Epicure's Mexican meal kit. It comes with our fajita seasoning, uh, the poco picante, the nacho cheese, and guacamole mix. So, and, and five uh, recipe cards, which is really great if you're needing some different ideas to use those ingredients. Um, but today I decided to not make my black bean quesadillas, which are one of my faves. And I'm gonna actually just make tacos. So we also have these taco packets. Um, this is a full set of meals for your family and it comes with three of these. So that would be three meals then not mix them all together. But what's really great about this is it is significantly better for you made with natural ingredients. Um, none of that like bad for you caking ingredients that come with store-bought um, taco seasoning mixes. So I'm going to just spend a little bit of time um, cooking for you all. And today I'm going to make the nacho cheese sauce. I'm still going to make these into a quesadilla, but I'm just going to do a simple like taco quesadilla. Um, and so I'm going to be using uh, the steamer and our non-slip cutting board, which is fantastic on both sides. It's got these little grippies, so it doesn't slide when you're cooking on it. Um, our mix and chop or meat separator. I'm not even sure what, what they call it, but yeah, it's a ground meat separator, I believe. Um, but this is fantastic. It's got very um, sharp pointy edges. So it actually works really good for chopping chicken too once it's cooked in the steamer or chopping your ground beef. Our saute spoon and of course our four in one spice spoons, which fits perfectly in all of our containers. Um, oh, and our four cup mixing bowl, which works really great for making the nacho cheese. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start by cooking the burger. So literally I just have some raw meat and we're going to put a pound of burger in the microwave. So if this were, um, if this were frozen, you would want to throw it in the microwave for about three minutes, take it out and then use the chopper and chop it up. Hang tight for one second. Okay, so you'd wanna use the chopper and chop it up and then cook it for the rest of the time. So usually about seven to eight minutes for frozen beef. It's about five for non-frozen. But you still wanna kinda of just chop it a little bit. When I'm not doing this talk, talking, um, I mean, you can have tacos made in, again, five minutes in the steamer. And while it's cooking in the steamer, you can be chopping your vegetables and literally be eating tacos within like seven, eight minutes. All right. So five minutes. While that's going, I'm gonna get the nacho cheese stuff ready because um, this does take a little bit of time in the microwave, not a lot of time, just mostly enough to uh, soften the cream cheese and um, get the cheese melted. So this makes quite a bit. I don't wanna make everything. So it says a half cup, actually I will make that, a half cup sour cream and a half cup cream cheese. So a total of a cup. So we will do that. Half a cup is only half this block, so that's not a whole lot. All right. So all you do is mix, put your cream cheese in, half a cup of sour cream. I'm eyeballing this because I make it quite a bit. Okay. And then some cheese at the end if you want. I usually put it on during, but either way is fine. And then you need three tablespoons of our dip mix. All right, so there is that. Just kinda flatten it a little bit. Again, depending, you don't have to have your cream cheese softened. It will obviously soften while it's in the microwave. So I just like to make sure that the seasonings, I don't, I've never had them burn, so I don't think they burn, but just in case. All right, so we'll put that aside. Well, that's cooking. We're gonna make our guacamole. So all you do is take your avocado. And just for the record, um, our family was not a guacamole 
family until I was introduced to Epicure. Um, it is fantastic. Even like the biggest critics of having guacamole love our guacamole. So I would highly recommend you give it a try. And if you say like my kids or husband wouldn't eat it, I'd still give it a try. And you might be surprised what you get. All right. So um, sometimes if I know I'm not gonna eat a lot of it, I only make one avocado and put about um, a tablespoon and a half of the dip mix. Otherwise, if I feel like I want a lot of guacamole or if I wanna eat it with some chips, um, I'll use the two large avocados and then you use three tablespoons of the dip mix. And I learned a tip and it did work. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit of microwaving, but if you buy avocados from the store and they are hard, um, obviously they don't make great guacamole when they're hard. So what you do is you just throw them in the microwave. Um, I did like a minute at a time to get them to soften up and it really does actually work. So I would highly recommend that because sometimes when we do grocery pickup, we don't get to choose what our produce looks like. Um, and so I've had a few instances where my avocados are rock hard. And so after somebody shared that with me, it has made a world of difference. All right, so what I'm gonna do, um, once my nacho cheese is done, because like I said, I decided I kinda wanna make these as like a quesadilla and not maybe a, a formal, like regular taco, is, um, Put the nacho cheese down on the tortilla shells, um, a little bit more shredded cheese if you like a lot of cheese, and then your meat, and that's really it. So for the chicken and black bean quesadillas, it's the same thing. You put the nacho cheese down. Um, I make chicken in the steamer and put our fajita seasoning on it, and then I shred it up, put it on the taco shell, put some black beans on there, a little bit of extra cheese, fold them over, bake them in the oven for about four minutes just to get crispy, and then they're done and they're beautiful. Um, so for this, I'm gonna, it's gonna look a little bit different. I still have a whole minute to go and I'm like waiting for my meat to get done. So that's the other great thing about Epicure and using the steamer is a lot of times, once you've assembled everything, uh, whether it's a one pot meal in the steamer or you're just waiting, you can either be cleaning up your kitchen um, or walking away and doing something else and just saves you so much time. You're not like stuck at the stove stirring things and then have a big stove mess to clean up. Um, it's just fantastic. So I'm also gonna be using our, this is our half sheet pan, and then this is our sheet pan liner. So we also have quarter sheet pans with quarter sheet liners. They come in a set of two. Um, this one's a set of one, but this works really great for uh, making the quesadillas. So I know I'm gonna need four for my family. So I'll just get four out and get them ready. All right, next. Ooh, I didn't get a... So there will be some grease in here. Um, you don't have to use a strainer. And actually, well, this is going, I'm gonna put the nacho cheese sauce in so it starts cooking. Okay, so you don't have to use a strainer. You can simply just like hold the steamer and strain it. And coming out of the microwave, the steamer usually isn't too hot where you can't touch it. It's a little bit hotter out here than it is on here. So um, you can just simply hold the sides and strain it. All right, so my meat is cooked. I'm just gonna finish chopping it so I can show you. So the reason why you chop it at first is because it really helps cook it a lot easier. And so when you're cooking chicken and stuff, if you're gonna use whole breasts, I would recommend just like slicing them in half because they cook a little bit faster than a whole breast. But that's all done. So now we're going to take our packet. These are our new kitchen shears. Take our packet and it says you can like, cook again for another several minutes. I usually don't do that. I usually just warm it up for like a minute. So you know when you're cooking it on the stove, once you add your meal packet and your water, typically you cook for 
um, you know, a while. I don't even know how long I simmer, probably more than I'm supposed to. I got it busted up enough now. All right. So, taco meat is ready. So I am just gonna stick it in the microwave for literally another minute to just warm it up again since I had to use cold water. Well, that's cooking. I'm hoping my nacho cheese sauce is all done. And it is awesome. So I put it in there for about two minutes because my cream cheese wasn't thawed out. So there's that. So it's great on tacos and it's excellent just with chips. You can add more cheese if you want. I think it actually calls for cheese. Yep, half cup. Grated cheddar or any cheese of your choice. Sometimes when I have more time, because I do have block cheese, I'll use that. All right, so we are all done and are just waiting for our meat. So I use the guacamole after um, it's all cooked and done. I just use it to serve on the side with my sour cream um, and any salsa. So I would have loved to make my poco picante today because I love that with the quesadillas. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> I have no tomatoes and I have no diced tomatoes. So I'm not making Coco Picante. It's literally as simple as adding a can of diced tomatoes. Um, and if you're on a no to low sodium diet, you just simply um, use no salt or low salt um, diced tomatoes from the store. And then that helps prevent your salt from getting too high. So all I'm doing here is just adding my nacho cheese sauce to the taco shells. Gosh, I love this so good. Okay, done. Next, I'm gonna put just a little bit more, we're in Wisconsin, so let's be real here. We like our shredded cheese. I'm gonna put some more shredded cheese on. And then last, we're gonna just put our meat on and it is ready for the oven. All right, fully cooked and done. So like I said, if you were just having regular tacos and you didn't wanna make these into like a quesadilla, or actually, you know what, maybe I'll make these into like a burrito. Let's do that. I'll be like a fancy burrito. I'm gonna just roll these. I'm changing my mind. Okay. Nice warm shell. But if you just wanted to have, like I said, a regular taco, you'd actually be done already. You could just simply eat them. All right. This one's Nicky's, so maybe not put so much stuff in here. one probably put more meat than I need in here but I like meat all right and that literally is it folks so I'm just gonna stick these in the oven for like two three minutes just to warm the tortilla shells and then I'll serve it with some sour cream some salsa and our guacamole mix and maybe some nachos on the side to eat up the rest of this nacho cheese dip. So there you have it, folks. I talked for a couple minutes. So total cook time of this meal was probably 12 minutes with the oven would be 15. So if you just did regular tacos, much less than that. <laughs> and if you wanted to be extra simple and just cook your meat, like five, six minutes, you could be done. So if you haven't tried this steamer yet, highly recommend it. If you haven't tried our Mexican meal kit or our taco seasoning, I also recommend it. It is really tasty. And if you have any questions, let me know.